Welcome back to another basics game maker video tutorial and today we're gonna dabble a little bit with rooms what they actually do once they are loaded how to jump between them and then if you are just wondering what actually persistence for rooms means and if you maybe want to do a little bit more so some room manipulation in advance then hey this video is for you this is one up indie i am a developer so if you like what you're seeing and hearing then why not consider sharing liking and subscribing to the channel of course so let's start off fresh so if you have a project open then per default you just have the first room and then you see this nice little home icon which is defining in game maker so if you just double click on it and then it's defining hey once you are pressing on run or f5 then this uh, room is getting loaded so let's say you, we create another room as you can see this is empty and then on the default it just has instances and background layers in there so basically a room is having some properties and it has some stuff in it so let's go into our the room number one which already customized and then basically what's happening if you for example start the game game maker will just say like hey where is the home thing and then for example if you see ah what is this you can actually swap the first room which is being loaded in so there is no main function um, somewhere hidden in game maker you cannot find it this is just defining like hey where is our starting point so um, everything which is in our room one is getting loaded into memory and what's being loaded into memory a few uh, things so first of all your layers which you have defined on the left side more or less and then on your let's say for example my instances layers i have my enemies and my player and these things are being loaded into memory each time uh, the way you see it now but of course for my beginners then what else do we have well rooms have specific properties so first of all physics we're gonna skip on that one then viewports and cameras just these are basically camera values let's say which are following the player then you can define them and then tons of values which you can fill out not important for us and then the room settings so for example here the size which is kind of huge but of course for the tutorial it was good enough and then you got the thing which is saying here persistent a very very important to understand because persistent actually means that things are not being unloaded once you leave the room so once again if you are going into a room so this is or just a level you can call it whatever you like then everything is getting loaded into memory so it's being hold and then we can actually do stuff in there but if you flag it as persistent and then you leave the room and go to another one so an example would be let's say you have at the very beginning a logo room then a start room with a start button and then you just jump as let's say as the third room into an action uh, room or action level and then you can flip flop between those if you like so if you for example want to end your game and then each time you are changing your room everything is getting loaded and unloaded for uh, into well the old room is getting unloaded from memory and the new one is getting loaded but if you flag here as persistent which you can do in code also then it means uh, the way you left the room so let's say you are leaving the action room then you go into I don't know your intro room or I don't know reward room or whatever and then you go back to your action room then everything which how you left it will be loaded in like that so for example here if um, uh, the player has w went down here then he would be down here and of course if a few of those instances would be deleted then they would be gone also so this is then not a fresh start if you flag it as persistent very important to understand here and then of course there are a few things if you go into the manual first of all and most of them are not terribly important so here room and um, there are three uh, 
kind of groups of what you can do with rooms. First of all, these are the global, uh, global variables which do hold informations. These are read only, so these are not for the manipulation. They're just for checking and getting stuff. And then for the most part, this is the only one which I actually use room which is giving you back the id so the identification number of the room then you can do some manipulation so let's say we are in our game here in this one no let's go actually into game maker itself and um you want to say like hey am i in my action room then do something and then of course there are a few things to understand because game maker does have specific events under other little bit hidden by the way uh, views but views you can completely forget and then you see like oh what is this room start and room end and these things are always triggered so for example this is always triggered if you uh, go into another room and you start it then you can spawn things in advance or make some setups same for the room end if you want to um, delete I don't know some data structures or whatever and things which you don't need and then room and these uh, things are always triggered uh, at the start and then at the end even for example you don't use them so here um, well, you might as well utilize them so this is that part and then of course you can actually uh, jump between rooms and this would be the most important part here would be room go to so let's go into back into game maker and then you just say like hey room go to and then you just input the room so here would be this one or another one um, where you want to jump to next so this is how you transition from one room to the other one or just consider it from one level to the other level of course you can just go you can say room uh, what is it next uh, what is it called next or previous then it would be the sequential order so um, a little bit confusing i would say as a gold standard room go to is good to but for example if you just go if you're here and then you want to go to the next then this one would be the next one if you're here you want to jump back then this would be the previous one these things are being stored also just for your convenience so they are there but most of the time you should know where, where or in which jump, uh, room or level you want to jump to so here once again that and then for example let's say you want to restart your level your action level then what you can actually do is go room two and then you go to the same room which you're in but since you are uh, deleting everything from memory and then uh, everything's getting created new then you kind of um, well restart the room so why do we have room restart it's a little bit different because it will also trigger room end event if you like so here kind of redundant count not sure what the main uh, issue is maybe a room restart is for example if you flag it as persistent and then um, you want to uh, re reset everything i guess room restart would be the way to go and then we go to the last part not terribly important in my opinion because here you can actually um, change the rooms uh, in advance very important because um, you cannot do that during runtime. So let's say we got our game running and then you just say like, hey, room set with or set persistent or whatever. This would not work. These are things which you need to plan in advance. So let's say you want to jump to another room and you want to customize it beforehand, then this works. But for example, during runtime, so let's say if you are in the action room and you just say like, hey, room clear or room instance add or whatever, these things won't be working so you need to plan ahead in this kind of stuff so here not a dynamic system but of course it would uh, mess up a lot of uh, internal values and things so it does make sense already hopefully you now understand how that works so once again very very quickly rooms you can jump between rooms uh, rooms hold values in the room editor which you can edit if you like and then you can flag it as persistent not recommended by the way uh, this is not the best system if you want to leave it at a specific point and then you want to return with the same stuff which you left it in already that was it from my side have a good one one up indie